All right, guys, here I am all set up a 2021 Honda Accord LX. And while this may be a base model, I think you'll like some of the additions they've made to this car. Are you looking for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto? That's in this car. Are you looking for an eight inch display screen? That's in this car. Are you looking for a little bit wider grille? That's in this car. Are you looking for a back seat seatbelt reminder? That's even in this car. Let's check out all the changes in this car now. Let's talk about performance in the 2021 Honda Accord LX. So as we come in here, you've got a 1.5 liter turbo engine with 192 horsepower. Now this is headed to a CVT transmission, which translates out to your 17 inch alloy wheels on the outside of the car. So you're getting 30 in the city and 38 on the highway in this vehicle. So brake distribution is right here. You of course got your windshield wiper fluids. I've got an air box running across. I've got my four cylinder engine right here that's turboed. Of course, I've got my easy access to my battery. So my terminals are easy to access if I wanna add you know, subwoofers, lights, anything additional to the car. I've got a fuse box sitting right up and easy on top here. So they've made it nice and easily accessible to get to everything inside of the vehicle. While we're up at the front of the car, let's talk about safety and what this vehicle has to offer. So this car is gonna offer a few different things. Now, the first one I wanna point out is a little bit new for this vehicle, and that's gonna be where your radar is. So it's actually right down below your brackets. You can see right there. So that's gonna work with adaptive cruise control lane keep assist, along with this camera that you can find right there. So adaptive cruise control is set up to where I can set my cruise and it'll keep the distance between me and the car in front of me using that radar and the camera to detect the car in front of me. And then lane keep assist is usually if I start to drift to the left or the right, it'll actually help keep me centered in my lane using that camera up top. Now, additionally, these work with collision mitigation braking, which is set up to where if it's looking like I'm gonna rear in another car, it'll give me an audible alert, then it'll actually start to apply the brakes to help prevent me from rear ending another vehicle. Now, on top of all of those active safety features, I've got some other features running. I've got six airbags in this car, so I've got two front, two side with occupant detection system, so if I'm pushed up against it, it won't open and whiplash me. And then I've got two full curtain airbags to open with rollover sensors, right? So these are gonna pop out here and run the extent of the glass. So even if I'm not hitting another car, but I'm driving off a road and starting to roll, it'll actually start to apply the brakes to help prevent the accident. Now on top of that, I've got ACE body structure. Now ACE body structure is set up with different crinkle zones along the, uh, the frame of the vehicle, set up to drop the engine down below so it doesn't get pushed up in the cabin, and then to crinkle to help prevent anyone in the cabin from getting injured in a wreck. So you've got a lot of different features working even in a base model vehicle to help protect you. Now while on this profile view, I will point out that you of course do have 17 inch alloy wheels. You do of course have uh, your standard brake setup. So you've got disc brakes on front and back. Now moving around the car, I will point out that you do have breakaway mirrors. I like that they are body colored, so they're not black like a lot of the base models that Honda offers. And I've got white uh, door handles too, so they're matching, right? You don't always see that when you're looking at some of the base models with Honda. Now moving around to the back of the vehicle, um, of course, I've got my LED setups on the front and my LED on the back. Uh, the only thing that won't be LED is my uh, high beams. And on the back of the car, I've got reflectors. And then down below, you can see I've got a nice trim setup here. Uh, so I do have a backup camera. That backup camera is noticeable right here. And um, then I've got my emblem set up, my badging, and then of course my antenna. Now when it comes to the trunk, I've got quite a bit of space in this vehicle. The course does come with carpeted floor mats. So I'm just gonna point those out as I move them out of the way. And then I've got some hooks on the sides here to help me out as far as storage and bags. And then I do of course have a single flat layout here, right? So it's gonna lay all the way flat. I don't get that 60, 40 split until I climb up into the next monitor. But to do it, I would just pull this tab that unlocks it and then I can flip those down. Now down below here, I of course have my jack mic set accessories and uh, my uh, spare tire. So it is a full diameter spare, meaning that I have um, a full height, just not full width on this. Now, while we're talking, I've got this tiny little funnel here uh, that you could obviously use for a lot of different things, but I'm just gonna point out the general basics to what this is used for. So first off, my door here is set up to my door lock. So if they're unlocked, it allows me to unlock this. Now from here, if I ran out of gas, the function of this is you'll notice that this is capless and it has a valve that pushes back. So if I ran out of gas, I'm probably gonna have a, a water bottle or you know whatever I can use to fill up gas. I'm gonna need this to hold that valve open so I can pour gas into it. So that is the function of this in case you didn't know. Uh, this lives in the back of your car and if you ever need it, take advantage of it. So when it comes to the second row, you're looking at a cloth interior in this LX base model. If you're looking for leather, you wanna climb up maybe to that Sport SE model or you would need to climb to that EXL model, which is gonna be a few models up. So as I sit here in the second row, I've got quite a bit of space with the seat pushed almost all the way back. As a six footer, I would set this up for me and then I still have additional space as you can see for me to use. Now, as you come in the car, I will point out that you have a nice like neoprene finish material here. This is the tan interior, of course, with the white exterior. And it is, of course, set up with my tethers and anchors. So if I do need to set up, you know, car seats or anything of that nature, I absolutely can. 
Now, of course, on the, the doors, you have kind of a two-toned look here. It's always gonna be black across the tops to prevent glare. So you can see that running the full extent of the car. And then I, of course, have a, 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 almost a leather finish right here. So if the elbows are rubbing on this, it's gonna protect it a little bit better. I've got storage, of course, in the doors, and then I've got storage right here. If you're looking for air vents or USBs here, you're probably gonna need to climb some models. In that SE model in the Sport, you can find those USBs. Until then, you've got two USBs up in the front of this specific vehicle. So when it comes to the front row of this car, you're not gonna have all the powered features that you might be used to if you're in a higher trim level, but you still do have all those functions that you would need. So as we move in here, I will point out that it's not powered on either one of these sides. However, I will point out that you can adjust it off this rail system to slide it up forwards and backwards. Now, as far as raising the seat, all you gotta do is lift up and it'll raise the seat, and to lower it, all you gotta do is press down to lower it. And then of course, I can affect my backrest right here. So I have those controls here, and then on the other side, I can slide it forward and backwards, and then I, of course, control my backrest. So you still have those same features, they're just not gonna be powered when it comes to that. Now, as far as easy access buttons, I'll point out that, of course, you can access your, your hood right here, and then your trunk releases right here along with off of the key. And then up here, I've got my mirror controls, my door locks, my window locks, and then my auto, auto up down as far as my one touch buttons to do my mirrors and, excuse me, my windows. Now, over here on the dash, I've got a couple different buttons. Vehicle stability assist works with my traction control. So in the event that I go into skid, it'll transfer power to whichever wheel is getting better traction. And then above that, I have something that hops over to some of my Honda sensing features. Now, right above that, I'm gonna to touch on this. This is my trip computer, so this will allow me to toggle between these that you see right here. So over here in the center, I can uh, reset those, right? And then if I wanna adjust the uh, brightness, I can do so on both the touch screen and this screen using this toggle screen right here. Now let's come back to this button right here. When I press this button, it's gonna pull up a couple different things that you're gonna see right here. And that's gonna be my road departure mitigation to let me know if it's on, and then also my collision mitigation braking system, right? So road departure mitigation, if I start to drive off the shoulder of the road, it'll give me an audible alert if I'm starting to drift, and then it'll actually shake the wheel, say, hey, wake up, pay attention. Now the other one right here is collision mitigation braking. That's set up to where if it's looking like I'm gonna rear in another car, it'll give me an audible alert, then it'll start to actually apply the brakes to help prevent the accident. So both these features are always on and running unless I turn them off. Now what's cool about this is this menu right here. This side is digital so I can control a lot of different screens over here and this is your analog side, right? And then of course in the center here I've also got it to where I can get a digital uh, speed too. So I've got speed and a digital and analog setting which I really like that they've done. Now my tack, if I just want to see a tack I can absolutely do that. If I want to see range and fuel so this is you know how many miles I'm in this tank of gas, you know what kind of fuel consumption I'm getting, uh, speed and time, same option. Audio, I really like this because I can start toggling up and down to access my different audio options. So my USBs, my FM, my AM, uh, my Bluetooth, uh, and then my smartphone capabilities, which this car now offers Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, giving me some additional abilities in the vehicle. Now, scrolling below that, if I've connected up my phone, uh, give me access to you know, uh, you know, making phone calls and doing things of that nature via Bluetooth. Traffic signs is a really cool feature. It uses this camera right up here to detect those traffic signs as you pass them, and it'll throw up speed limits right here. So if you're in a work zone, it'll let you know exactly what the speed limit is, so you don't have to worry about getting caught in a speed trap. Now, additional features I've got here, driver support. So this would be related to Honda sensing as far as distance is keeping between me and cars in front of me. My alertness monitor, so if I'm using all of these different features, uh, adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, um, you know, all these, I'm not touching the gas and brake that much and then the steering wheel I'm just kind of hovering and touching it barely if it's not noticing some active uh you know use of the car it'll it'll start to alert you so that's what this feature is now rear seat belt reminder is new to this vehicle it's just going to let you know if they are buckled up in the back so if you got that kiddo who likes to unbuckle buckle unbuckle this is going to give you an alert and let you know so this is new to the 2021 model uh, and then a maintenance reminder, it'll give you oil life when it gets down to 15%. It'll throw you a code and let you know uh, what you could be expecting. You can Google it uh, or check your, your manual. Safety support, those two features that we already mentioned, it's just letting you know that they're on. And then warnings, this would be like if I don't have my seatbelt on, if the trunk is open, if a door is open, that sort of thing, right? So digital display there. Uh, I've got a digital setup as far as my miles per hour. And then I have an analog setup additionally too. So I've got all these things working in front of me. The only thing that's really changed off the steering wheel, this side looks pretty familiar. If you've seen the 2020, 2019, 2018, all this is the same my home button, volume control, scrolling on that, that you can see me scrolling up there, uh, and then back out. And then my Bluetooth controls to answer a call, hang up and use voice command. This voice command button now plays a part for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So this is gonna come in here in just a second. Now on the right side, they changed things up just a little bit. So to set up my uh, cruise control, I would just set this and that'll hold my speed. And you can see when it's on, it'll give me an indicator right here. And then I can minus out if I wanna lower the speed or increase the speed. And then setting up my distance that keeps between me and cars in front of me would be right here. So when using, you'll see those boxes kind of pop up there. The more boxes, the more space it's gonna hold between me and the car in front of me. So that's adaptive cruise control. Now over here is my lane keep assist. If I press this, you're gonna see this screen come on. When I'm going over 45 miles an hour, these will turn solid and it's now actively reading the road. How it's doing that, it's using the camera up here to detect those lines on the road. Uh, and that way it'll keep me centered so I don't drift left or right into another vehicle. 
So just be aware of that. It is using a camera, so it's not always gonna pick it up. And if it's torrential rain and you have your windshield wipers on, that's gonna disable this feature. So just something to be aware of as far as a caveat. Over here, I've got my auto on off headlights. On the other side, I've got my windshield wiper controls. I, of course, have a push button start on this vehicle. All right, when it comes to the touchscreen, I just wanna talk you through uh, what you're gonna see up here on the screen. So as far as accessing your Bluetooth, this would be where you would do so. You can, you know, get a contacts as far as keypad. You can go to your contacts section. You can jump around here to favorites, you know, all these different things that you have available to you. Now, as far as next to that, you're gonna see your settings here. Under vehicles, where I like the probably the most optional settings that you wanna play with, and that's your door and window setup. So auto door lock is set to where, when I get out of the car, or excuse me, when I hit 10 miles an hour, it'll automatically lock the doors in the car. So it's set to speed right now. I can change that right here if I want. Now, as far as getting out of the car and controlling your uh, your door locks, right now it's set to where when I open my driver's side door getting out of the vehicle, it'll actually unlock the remaining doors of the car. So I can change that to where when I shift to park, it'll unlock all doors, or when I uh, turn the ignition off, it'll unlock all doors. So know that you can play with both of those additional features right here. So just something to be aware of in case you're buying this car and you're just kind of wondering, hey, what are some additional setups I can mess with? And then your lighting setup, you can you know affect things as far as how long timers stay on as far as your headlights when you turn the car off and things of that nature. Now, FM is right here and FM and AM are gonna be the exact same. So as far as seeking, scanning and doing all those normal things, when you find a station you want to keep, press and hold, and that'll set it. So easy enough to understand as far as your FM and AM. Bluetooth audio, once you connect up via Bluetooth, it'll give you the option to, of course, access anything from there and stream it. Uh, I have Android Auto connected, so this gives me the access to not only my music, my messages, but uh, several other features. So right here, I use Google Maps typically, but I could use Waze Maps also since I'm an Android-based user. Uh, now, if you're an Apple user, you'd have access to Apple Maps additionally too. Uh, so there are several different apps. These are just the ones that I have on my phone specifically that I use. So as far as accessing Spotify, if I want to listen to some music, I can absolutely do that. We're going to take a second here and I'm just going to throw 15 of the most popular apps up here so you can see kind of as far as podcasts, you know, as far as, you know, books on tape, uh, audio wise, navigation system, just some different things that you can take advantage of. If you want to listen to sports, different things that you have available to you so you know what's out there. But that's Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Now, trip computer, you can view all of that info up right here. Uh, it's that same info that you can view on the other side here, over here. So if I wanted that same info, I can get it right here or I can have it here. So just different places I can get the same info. SMS text function, it'll read it aloud to you and give you some options as far as a response. I don't really care that much for it. Do Android Auto, I'll receive those texts and then I can use the voice command button to uh, to send back a, uh, an answer, right? USB, you can see I have my Pixel connected up and then I have a second USB. Both my USBs are right down in here as far as accessing them, so hopefully you can see those. Uh, and then of course I've got AM here. I got my system update. I do have a compass now in this vehicle, which I'm, I'm glad that they've added that in. Uh, and then specifically my clock and wallpaper, uh, I can access that right here. And you can customize this back screen if you want. Uh, to do so, you could just go into the settings. And then once you got into the settings, uh, you could access this screen uh, and change that uh, type and wall face, or excuse me, not that one, but the one right above it, clock face. Uh, and then you could add something if you add a USB plugged in with images on it. So JPEG or BMP file will get you done. So that is kind of the quick run out of the touchscreen. You can also control the AC. Uh, you'll see that whenever I do that, it'll it'll show me up there uh, what's going on with it. So I just like that they do that. That way you can see what's kind of going on and what temperatures I have set. So I like that it has that nice touch to it. And then of course, all my controls are down here. It is dual zone, so I can control left and right separate of each other. So one of the big things that they've changed this year is that you do have the eight inch touchscreen and you do have access to Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So that is a big move here uh, for a base model Honda Accord. So just be aware of that. If you're looking at this car, this is what's different from the previous year model. My shifter is pretty easy to understand. You know, I've got, you know, my park, uh, reverse, neutral drive, sport mode, and my lowered gears here. Uh, and when my lights are on, you know, these obviously light up. Uh, my eco mode right here will help improve gas mileage. It'll throw on a leaf up here, letting me know that I'm gonna get better gas mileage when using it, but I'm giving up some of the power off the accelerator and a little bit of the AC control. Now down below that is gonna be my idle start stop. So this is new in the car. It's always on unless I press and turn it off and then you'll get a warning if you turn it off there. So when I hit it, uh, you'll see that warning right there. Uh, what that means is, is that when I come to a complete stop, it can turn off the engine, but leave the electronics and the AC control on uh, to help improve gas mileage. My parking brake is electronic. When I set it, you'll see that come on. Let me move this out of the way here just so you can see a little bit better. Uh, and then when I release, it'll turn off. Brake hold set to where I'm in stop and go traffic. I can turn this feature on and it'll hold the brake for me. Now, one caveat to this is you do have to have your seatbelt on. So let me put my seatbelt on here and I'll show you how it works. Now that I have my seatbelt on, if I press that button, you'll see it appear here, brake hold and brake hold, and then it'll actually say it's holding the brake for me. So this way, when I'm in drive, you'll see where it says hold now. Uh, I can let my foot off the brake so I don't have my foot on the uh, gas or the brake down there. Not that you can really see it that well anyways, but I don't. Uh, and then once I hit the gas, it'll actually release the hold. I'll start to move forward. Let's say I'm in a drive-through line or in stop and go traffic. I come to a complete stop. Once I'm at that full stop, 
it throws the hole back on and I can release my foot. So it's just a stop and go feature. This is really a convenience feature uh, just to help you out as far as when you're in you know, drive through lines uh, or anything like that. But just be aware that if I take uh, my seatbelt off like I just did while the car's in drive, I don't have my foot on there, it immediately throws the emergency brake on. So it's got a safety feature built in in case you're a dummy like me and you forget. So let me throw that car in park here. While we're up here, I just will throw it in reverse real quick and throw your backup camera. You do have three different views on this backup camera. So a wide angle, I've got one aimed, uh, you know, just a classic backup camera and then one aimed straight down. Six inches from my car, two and a half feet from my car. So if I'm parallel parking, I want them on the other side of this line. And you can see both of those lines in all of these views, right? So easy enough to understand as far as your backup camera. It's a nice big view. So even from far back, I can see what's going on here uh, when I'm backing up, you know, and it'll cut the wheel with me. So it's got dynamic guidelines for me too. So as far as the car goes, this is a fantastic car. I would highly recommend it to you. Um, let me turn on the light here. Let me turn on, hey, let me turn on a little bit of light there. Um, so as far as this car goes, I would highly recommend it. It's a great base model vehicle. Now that it offers Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, along with all of the Honda Sensi features, this is a fantastic vehicle. Um, for the price, 26.1, you got about 1,500 bucks of markup. You can really get yourself a good deal on this car. And heading into this, uh, got kind of the end of the year, they're gonna, of course, run specials. And if you're looking to lease the car, I'm sure you can get it for cheap there too. Um, so if I was looking at a 2020, honestly, I'd go to the 2021 just because I can get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. I do like some of the changes in the grill, a little bit different look there. Uh, and just overall, I like what they've done for this vehicle. Vehicle as far as a base model goes. Now, if you're looking for a model above this, things might change. You know, uh, the next model up might be the same as the 2020 to where you can just say, hey, I'll save the money and get the one year older. But do know that this is an SE model in this 2021 year. So that is a trim level available to you, which means that they are gonna change the body style next year. That is typically what Honda does anytime they add an SE into a trim level. So knowing that this is the LX, there is a sport model and there is a sport model SE, be aware of that. That means that typically we're gonna see some big changes in the following year after that. So just something to be aware of if you're looking at this car thinking, well, do I wanna wait that one extra year in case there are some really cool changes that I like. Uh, things to be aware of if you're looking at trim levels above this, uh, my ESL and above do have the access and ability to now use Apple CarPlay and Android without using this USB cord. So that's kind of a cool feature that they are offering now. So just something to be aware of in case you're considering a higher trim level. If you're looking for leather or power seats you're probably going to go to that sport i would highly recommend the sport se if you want some of those additional features get you some 19 inch alloy wheels on the back uh, and i've got a video coming out on that too so it'll be out here soon and short shortly or soon one of the two i don't know i don't know what i'm doing anymore but after that and all that's said and done i hope you do me a couple favors one hit the like button two hit the subscribe button for me three leave a comment let me know what you think do i talk too much do i talk too fast i get told it regularly thank god we can rewind or slow down videos other than that i just want to say thanks for watching i appreciate it i hope you'll subscribe i hope you'll like other than that thank you again let it go